Well, these two playlists have been tough, but with every video now I get there, welcome back to the Top 10 Ring Rated Fighters by Decade. Playlist I am creating now. On the last one, we focused on the light middleweights. A little time back, I had to get all the rest of the ratings finished for all the other divisions. That is done now. Welterweight and light welterweight video ready, working on lightweights. So I thought I would upload my welterweight um, ring rated fighters by decade video. So let us start off in the first decade where welterweights were rated in the 1920s. Now in the 1920s, okay, the 10th rated welterweight was Willie Harmon, okay, who was top 10 rated for two years. Um, he was top three rated for one year and he scored 14 ring rating points. In ninth place was young Jack Thompson, okay, who was also rated two years, top 10. He was also rated one year, top three and also scored 14 points like Harmon um, beating him on the tiebreak system a simple tiebreak system I've included in eighth place is actually Gorilla Jones okay who was top 10 rated for two years um, top three rated for one year and scored 15 ring rating points Sergeant Sammy Baker comes next okay in seventh place um, Baker was top 10 rated in the 20s for three years and it was a short decade okay he was top three rated for one year scoring 15 ring rating points and Jimmy McLarning comes next in sixth place. He was only top 10 rated the one year, but he did fight up through the weights. He was top three rated one year and scored 15 ring rating points. And McLarning will come to more prominence in the next decade. Now, in fifth place, former welterweight champion Pete Lasso. He was top 10 rated for two years. Top three rated for one year, scoring 21 ring rating points. While Tommy Freeman, okay, um, whose abilities are questioned by some um, about how good he was. Um, Tommy Freeman was in fourth place, was top 10 rated for four years, the joint longest run of this short decade, um, along with number one. Um, he was not top three rated, nor a ring champion, and Tommy Freeman scored 26 ring rating points in total. While in third place, okay, the first of the top three is the toy bulldog Mickey Walker, who was top 10 rated for two years and top three rated for two years prior, of course, to his full campaign at middleweight. Uh, Mickey Walker still comes third place in the welterweights of the 20s with 30 ring rating points overall. And in second place, a very underrated former welterweight, Jackie Fields. Okay, Jackie Fields, highly rated by Nat Fleischer, amongst others, was top 10 rated for te uh, two years. He was top three rated both of those years, and Jackie Fields was a ring champion for one year. And he comes second place with 32 ring rating points. But the fighter who scored the most ring rating points under the system I've created for the 1920s welterweights was in fact Joe Dundee. Joe Dundee was top 10 rated for four years, so the joint longest top 10 rated fighter along with Tommy Freeman. But Joe Dundee was top three rated um, for three of those four years. He was not a ring champion, but he does come in taking this decade's top spot with 49 ring rating points. So like many of the others, um, major divisions, okay, the first um, decade is a short one, not a full decade. Then every decade after this is a full one. Now, light welterweight um, is a strange one, okay, because it has a partial decade, of course, for the 1920s. Um, but then due to the division going out of fashion, um, it then has also a partial 1930s, okay, before coming back um, in its entirety. So the light welterweight division to follow this one has a few decades um, that are actually partial ones not full ones due to the break um, that was taken in recognizing the light welterweight division um, in the 30s into the 40s but we'll cover that on that video so Joe Dundee um, clinches the top spot here above Jackie Fields and Mickey Walker so let's leave the 1920s now and let us go on to the welterweights of the 1930s um, to see who the top 10 are so, in 10th place of the 1930s, okay, it is indeed Baby Joe Gans. Baby Joe Gans was top 10 rated um, as a welterweight in the 30s for four years. He was top three rated for one year. Uh, Baby Joe Gans comes in with a total of 29 ring rating points. And an underrated fighter in ninth place, Jack Carroll, okay, the Australian fighter. He was top 10 rated for three years. Um, all three of those years, he was top three rated. Um, and Jack Carroll scored 36 ring rating points. Now, just beating Jack Carroll on the tiebreak, okay, is um, current Hall of Famer, Young Corbett III in eighth place. He was top 10 rated for three years. All three of those years at welterweight, he was top three rated. Um, and Young Corbett III beat Carroll on the tiebreak to score 36 ring rating points. But the next fighter beat both Corbett and Carroll on the tiebreak with 36 points. It is the rough and tumble Fritzy Zivic. Another Hall of Famer, okay, who was top 10 rated in the 30s at welterweight for four years. He was top three rated for two years and scored 36 ring rating points. 
Now in sixth place is a relatively unknown fighter to many, Bet Van Cleveren. Okay, a very, very decent fighter himself in his own way. He was top 10 rated for four years. Uh, Cleveren was top three rated for three years. And just edge out um, Zivic Corbett and Carroll scoring 37 ring rating points. Now, second place from last decade is now fifth place in this decade. So, Jackie Field scores top 10 in two decades. Um, as a welterweight in the 1930s, he was top 10 rated for only three years. He was top three rated for two years and he was a ring champion. So, Jackie Fields was a ring champion for one year, at least in two decades. Um, and he scores 39 ring rating points in total. And in fourth place, only been rated top 10 for two years um, in the 1930s at welterweight. Of course, he was also rated at uh, lightweight, featherweight was. Homicide Hank Henry Armstrong caught the welterweight title towards the end of the decade um, when he jumped up and beat Barney Ross. So top 10 rated two years, top three rated two years. Both of those years, he was ring champion. Henry Armstrong scores 40 ring rating points. But the top three welterweights in the 1930s in third place, okay, is the excellent welterweight champion Barney Ross. He also jumped up like Armstrong from lower weights. Um, he was top 10 rated at welterweight for three years, top three rated for three years. And all three of those years, Barney Ross was a ring champion. Barney Ross scored 60 ring rating points. Now, just edging out Barney Ross into second place is the great Filipino puncher, Seferino Garcia. Seferino Garcia was top 10 rated as a welterweight in the 1930s for six years. Um, four of those years, um, Seferino Garcia was top three rated um, and Seferino scored 62 ring rating points. So just edging Barney Ross up into second place. But the fighter with the most ring rating points in the 1930s at welterweight is that great fighter I respect massively, Jimmy McLarnin, who was rated last decade as well, but this decade he had more of a fuller decade to go at. Jimmy McLarnin was top 10 rated as a welterweight in the 30s for seven years. All seven of those years, McLarnin was a top three rated fighter um, and Jimmy McLarnin was a ring champion for two years and thus comes in with an unstoppable total in the 1930s of 103 ring rating points. So McLarnin easily takes the decade of the 1930s as the highest or stroke most consistent um, top 10 rated welterweight in rings rankings. So there is the 1930s. Now, of course, like I said, this is an it all, okay, the ratings are all done and when all the divisions are done, right down to minimum weight, there will come a special video, like I mentioned, like a pound for pound top 10 rated fighters at Decade, but it's not just a fighter from each division, it's the top 10 scoring fighters of each decade across all divisions, okay, so it will be a decade and the top 10 scoring fighters in ring rating points, kind of a pound for pound rating system at the end of the playlist to cap it off. So anyway, into the 1940s now. To most people, it was clear who may emerge top on this one. Um, in 10th place, okay, we have California Jackie Wilson, the underrated contender. He was top 10 rated for three years. Um, he was top three rated for two years, a ring champion for zero. Uh, California Jackie Wilson scored 24 ring rating points. And meanwhile, in ninth place, Johnny Greco, he was top 10 rated for five years in all. Um, only one of those years he was top three rated. Um, Greco scored 27 ring rating points. And just beating Greco on the um, tiebreak, okay, in eighth place is Bernard Dukerson, okay, who was top 10 rated for three years. He was top three rated for all three of those years at welterweight. Um, and he scored 27 ring rating points, like I said, beating Greco on the tiebreak. And in seventh place, okay, a fighter who will come to more prominence next decade is the Cuban Hawk Kid Gavilan. Kid Gavilan was top 10 rated as a welterweight in the 1940s for three years. He was top three rated for two years and Gavilan scored 34 ring rating points. While in sixth place, okay, we have the man who Ray Robinson defeated uh, to win the vacant welterweight title, Tommy Bell. Uh, Tommy Bell was top 10 rated for three years. All three of those years, he was top three rated. Uh, Tommy Bell scored 36 ring rating points. And in fifth place, a second decade score for the tough Fritzy Zivic in fifth place. He was top 10 rated for four years. Zivic at welterweight, he was top three rated two years. And he was a ring champion one year. Um, and Zivic thus scores 38 ring rating points. While in fourth place, okay, Henry Armstrong also scores over two decades at welterweight. Um, he was top 10 rated in fourth place for three years. All three of those years, Armstrong was top three rated and he scored 42 ring rating points. 
Now, in third place, okay, he's another underrated fighter of the 1940s and 30s, Tippy Larkin. Tippy Larkin was top 10 rated for five years, okay, so joint second longest along with a few other entries like Greco and Cochran. Uh, Larkin was top three rated for three of those five years, and Tippy Larkin scored 44 ring rating points. But the top two on this decade score 100 plus. Uh, Cochran partially helped by the war and some selective matchmaking. But in second place is Freddie Red Cochran, who was top 10 rated as a welterweight in the 40s for five years. All five of those years, Cochran was top three rated, and all five of those years, Cochran was ring champion. So he comes in with a total of 100 ring rating points overall. But. Let's be honest, before the 1940s, most people probably could have picked who the number one rated welterweight of the 1940s was, and it is indeed the great Sugar Ray Robinson himself, who from the 1940s was top 10 rated as a welterweight, of course, he went to middle towards the end of the decade, but Sugar Ray Robinson was top 10 rated for eight out of those 10 years. All eight of those years, Sugar Ray Robinson were a top three rated welterweight, and Sugar Ray Robinson was also a four-year ring champion um, in the 1940s. So near near enough half a decade. So literally, uh, Robinson and Cochran between them were ring champion for nine out of the ten years. As you can see, the only other fighter to break that was Fritzi Zivic. So Sugar Ray Robinson comes in with a massive total of 137 ring rating points for the welterweights of the 1940s to easily um, take that title. Now it will be interesting when I do the pound pound video because how will Ray Robinson score total against all the other fighters across all the other divisions? You know in one decade I might get seven heavyweights, another decade I might get five middleweights, another decade I might get ten different fighters from ten divisions. It's going to be interesting. Um, also on that playlist I'm not going to add any middleweight points Robinson scored we're looking on the pound pound at the highest score per decade per division so adding on any middleweight points here and in that time which I know he did um, would would kind of corrupt the results same with Hopkins um, in the 2000s so on to the 1950s okay now Robinson's at middleweight now so he will not feature okay but in 10th place in the 50s we have Isaac Logart Isaac Logart was top 10 rated for four years um, he was top three rated for one year and scored 32 ring rating points and then fairly consistent contender in the 1950s in ninth place Vince Martinez who was top 10 rated for five years um, he was top three rated for two years and he just edges Isaac Logart with 33 ring rating points in total now in eighth place okay we have tony demarco more recent hall of famer tony demarco who was top 10 rated in the 50s for four years um he was top three rated for two years and scored 35 ring rating points while in seventh place the tough and dependable contender billy graham billy graham scored um top 10 for four years in the 1950s at welterweight he was top three rated three of those years and billy graham comes in with 38 ring rating points while in sixth place, okay, we have Don Jordan. Don Jordan was top 10 rated in the 50s for two years. Uh, he was top three rated both of those years, and both of those years, Don Jordan was ring champion. So Don Jordan comes in with a total of 40 ring rating points overall. And in fifth place, we have Virgil Atkins, okay, who was top 10 rated for four years, top three rated for two years, and um, Virgil Atkins scored 41 um, ring rating points. Just outside the top three in fourth place was Johnny Saxton. Johnny Saxton was um, the joint longest rated fighter of the 1950s um, at six years as a top 10 rated welterweight. Uh, two of those years, Johnny Saxton was top three rated and Johnny Saxton scored 46 ring rating points. But... The top three in third place, okay, is another excellent fighter, Johnny Bratton. Johnny Bratton was rated for half the decade at five years as a top 10 rated fighter. He was top three rated for three years and Johnny Bratton was a ring champion for one year. So he does finish that third place with a total of 58 ring rating points overall. Now, in second place, the onion farmer, the aggressive mauler, Carmen Basilio. Basilio was top 10 rated for four years. All four of those years, Basilio was top three rated. Um, he was also, of course, rated at middleweight in the 50s as well, which also accounts for why he wasn't rated longer. He also campaigned at middleweight. Carmen Basilio was ring champion for two years and comes in that second spot with 70 ring rating points. But the number one welterweight in the ring rating point system of the 1950s 
50. So, okay, following on from a lower entry in the 1940s is the Cuban hot kid Gavilan, who emerged after Robinson with some to and fro with some other fighters, um, emerged as the dominant welterweight champion. Kid Gavilan was top 10 rated for six years. Um, he was top three rated for five years. So half a decade, Gavilan was a top three rated fighter in the 1950s at welterweight. And Gavilan was a two-year ring champion and thus takes this decade's highest um, position with 85 ring rating points overall. So compared to the last decade, okay, Kiv Gavilan scored over 50 points lower than Sugar Ray Robinson scored um, in his more dominant decade at Welterweight in the 1940s. And what you find going through these videos as I go down from Welterweight to Light Welter to Light and Super Feather, when I go down to Featherweight Down, you find that many fighters move around a lot more. Um, and I think part of that is because the divisions don't have as much weight. But in the ratings, the way I catalogued them, I could clearly see that fighters on average were not quite being rated as long at top 10. Some of them were, but many of the other fighters, often the decades would have much larger lists of fighters, you know, signifying other fighters moving out, retiring, other fighters moving in. There was much more depth in the decades um, and in some of the decades in lower divisions um, the score totals are like this or even not as high as this um, it's a very interesting symmetry when you look at it so the 1960s we have Willie Ludick okay Willie Ludick was top 10 rated for four years okay he was top three rated for three years and Ludick scored 33 ring rating points in 10th place well in ninth place okay he's Ralph Dupas okay Ralph Dupas was a light middleweight champion uh, he was also rated at welterweight and below welterweight as you will see but Ralph Dupar was top 10 rated for four years. He was top three rated for three years and he scored 37 um, ring rating points. And then another dependable contender. Okay, at welterweight in eighth place, we have Ernie Lopez, not to be mixed up with Danny Little Red Lopez, the big puncher down at featherweight. But Ernie Lopez, the welterweight contender, was top 10 rated for four years in the 60s. He was top three rated for two years and Lopez scored 38 ring rating points. And in seventh place, okay, the tragic figure, Benny Kid Perret, okay, who would have scored higher, obviously had the tragedy with Griffith not ensued. But Perret was top 10 rated two years, top three rated two years, and um, a ring champion two years. So Benny Kid Perret scores 40 ring rating points in total. Now in sixth place, I'll have a little drink, long video. Now in sixth place, okay, is Brian Curvis, okay? Brian Curvis was top 10 rated for half the decade um, at five years. He was top three rated three years, um, and Brian Curvis scored 41 ring rating points. And then tough and dependable contender Manuel Gonzalez comes in fifth place. He was top 10 rated for four years. He was top three rated for two years. And Gonzalez scored 41 ring rating points in total. So, just outside the top three is the great Mantequila, Jose Napolis, okay? He was top 10 rated for three years. Uh, Napolis was top three rated two years. And a ring champion one year came more towards the end of the decade. Napolis also uh, was rated in divisions lower than welterweight because he wasn't a natural welterweight. He came up through some weights. Uh, Jose Napolis scored 42 ring rating points. But the top three here leave all others behind them. In third place, we have Curtis Cox. He is the longest top 10 rated welterweight of the 1960s at eight years. Curtis Cox was top three rated for three years, and he was a three-year ring champion. So scores a tally of 78 ring rating points. So minus in the three years as ring champion, many of his other years were not highly rated. He was more in the lower part of the top ten. Meanwhile, in second place, a fighter I find vastly underrated from this time, we have Luis Rodriguez. Luis Manuel Rodriguez, excellent fighter that he was, um, is in second place. He is the second longest rated top 10 fighter of the decade at seven years. Uh, Rodriguez was top three rated for six years and comes in with a total of near 100, scoring 94 ring rating points. But the number one of the 1960s, and I could have guessed it beforehand, um, is indeed um, the six-time lineal champion, Emil Griffith, who actually was top 10 rated as a welterweight in the 60s for six years. Um, he was top three rated for five years, and Emil Griffith was a four-year ring champion, so nearly half the decade he was ring champion at welterweight. In the 60s, and Emil Griffith scores a total of 100 ring rating points. Just edging out, of course, one of his great rivals down there. They had a four-fight series, Luis Manuel Rodriguez. 
So we're followed on a succession of great welterweights, okay, going from Robinson in the 40s, going uh, McLannan in the 30s, Robinson in the 40s, um, Gavilan in the 50s, Emil Griffith in the 60s, all of them great welterweights. Um, and we will now go on to the 1970s in a moment. I'll have another quick drink before we unveil who carries on this illustrious list of number ones. And again, I don't think it'd take a lot of working out who tops this one. Now, in 10th place, okay, we have Sugar Ray Leonard, who shows up right at the end of the decade. Uh, Sugar Ray Leonard was top 10 rated two years. It was top three rated two years and a ring champion one year. So Sugar Ray Leonard manages to squeeze in with 29 ring rating points. And of course, I have the ring rating points for every fighter in every decade. I'm only highlighting the top 10, but I do have ring ratings for every fighter in every decade. Uh, two ways now. Uh, in ninth place, we have Billy Bacchus. Billy Bacchus was top 10 rated three years. He was top three rated two years and a ring champion for one year. And Billy Bacchus scored a total of 35 ring rating points. While Pete Ranzani comes next, okay, in eighth place, um, he was top 10 rated half of the decade at five years. He was top three rated two years and scored 39 ring rating points. Well, meanwhile, in seventh place, okay, we have John H. Stracy. Uh, he was top 10 rated in the 70s for four years at welterweight. He was top three rated for two years and a ring champion one year. Uh, John H. Stracy thus comes in uh, with 41 um, ring rating points. You know, one of the interesting things about um, a playlist like this is it gives a different perspective on these fighters. We know how many people rate them, but how did they do in their decades in their time? Next in sixth place, we have Hedgemon Lewis. Top 10 rated for half a decade. Uh, top 3 rated for two years. Hedgeman Lewis scored 45 ring rating points. And in fifth place, we have Angel Espada, who was top 10 rated also like Hedgeman Lewis, half the decade at five years. He was top 3 rated three years and comes in with 48 ring rating points. The top four in fourth place, just outside the top three, is Pepino Cuevas, the long reigning champion. He was top 10 rated at welterweight for four years in the 70s. All four of those years, Cuevas was top three rated, and he scored just over the half century at 51 ring rating points. But the top three in third place, okay, is Carlos Palomino. Carlos Palomino was top 10 rated for three years. Um, he was top three rated all three of those years, and Palomino was a ring champion all three of those years, and thus comes in with a total of 60 ring rating points. And in second place is a non-champion, but a very consistent contender and quite a highly ranked contender. In second place, we have Clyde Gray. Clyde Gray was top 10 rated in the decade of the 70s at welterweight for 7 out of 10 years. He was top 3 rated for 4 years in there, so nearly half a decade is a top 3 contender. Um, and thus, Clyde Gray scored 66 ring rating points in total. So a very good effort for Clyde Gray there. Very consistent contender. So... In the 1970s, following on that illustrious list of McLarnin and Robinson and Gavilan and Emil Griffith, we have another great welterweight, okay? He was rated last year, showing up towards the end of the decade. It is the great Jose Napolis himself, who was top 10 rated for six years in the 1970s at welterweight. All six of those years, he was top three, and Jose Napolis was a ring champion for four years. So between him and Palomino, they shared the ring title for seven out of ten years. Uh, Stracy, Bacchus and Leonard, of course, held it on the other individual years. But Jose Napolis crushes all opposition on this decade, coming in with a total of 110 ring rating points. Okay, so that's 44 um, ahead of second place. And Napolis in this decade, um, you know, stands alone. So, there is my latest decade. We've gone from the 20s. We've now covered the 1970s. We'll now go into the um, talent-rich era of the 1980s, head to the modern time. Of course, at the end of this video, I will also have the recap at the end on the slide where I list the decade and the winner and their point total. So, there is the decade at 1970s. Now... We go on to the 1980s and a bit of a surprise uh, surprise number one here, probably to some people, because it's not Sugar Ray Leonard because he didn't stay active long enough and didn't stay in the weight long enough to get top spot. Now in 10th place, okay, he's contender Tommy Ayers, okay, he was top 10 rated four years, top three rated one year 
coming in with 29 ring rating points. And like Sugar Ray Leonard, another great welterweight of the 80s, Tommy the Hitman Hearns didn't stay there overly too long. Um, he was top 10 rated two years at welterweight. Both of those years he was top three rated and Tommy Hearns scored 30 ring rating points. While in eighth place, okay, the great Olympian Mark Breland. Uh, Breland was top 10 rated for four years, top three rated for one year and Breland scored 36 ring rating points. And in seventh place, okay, prior to retirements, then fights at light middleweight, then retirements, then fights at middleweight, we have Sugar Ray Leonard's last welterweight entries, uh, top 10 rated for two years in the 80s, top three rated two years, both of them ring champions, so Sugar Ray Leonard scores 40 ring rating points. While in sixth place, okay, it is Maurice Blocker, uh, who we remember getting destroyed by Tito Trinidad. Maurice Blocker was top 10 rated for six years, um, he was top three rated for four years, and he was a ring champion for zero years, Maurice Blocker scored 48 ring rating points while in fifth place the multiweight champion Simon Brown Simon Brown is the, is the joint second longest rated fighter of the decade along with Maurice Blocker behind the longest rated fighter uh, at six years as a top 10 fighter Simon Brown was top three rated two years and scored a full half century of ring rating points in the 80s at 50 while in fourth place okay is the UK fighter Lloyd Hunnigan Hunnigan was top 10 rated in the 80s as a welterweight for five years he was top three rated for four years Hunnigan was a ring champion for one year and comes in with 58 ring rating points in total while in third place okay the dazzling Lone Star Cobra Donald Curry um, who was like a sensation in the early to mid 80s uh, prior to the caps coming off against Hunnigan then McCallum etc but Don Curry was top 10 rated for four years at Welterweight in the 80s. He didn't fight McCallum at Welterweight, by the way. Uh, he was top three rated for four years, um, ring champion for one year. Don Curry comes third with 59 ring rating points. And a man Don Curry destroyed in brutal fashion comes in second place, okay, Milton McCory, who was top 10 rated at welterweight for five years in the 80s, four of those years he was top three rated, um, and Milton McCory scored 63 ring rating points. But the fighter who scored the most ring rating points in the 1980s is actually the magic man Marlon Starling. Marlon Starling was top 10 rated as a welterweight contender for 8 out of 10 years, covering from 80 to 89. He was top 3 rated for 4 of those years and Marlon Starling was a ring champion for 1 year and comes in with a total of 82 ring rating points, um, thus taking this decade's number 1 spot. And it's interesting there as well um, that the ring title, and you notice this when you go through the ratings as well uh, there are other decades earlier where there's not a full 10 years of ring champions but as you get into the 80s going into 90s 2000s you get some decades where there's been ring champions two or two two or three years tops out of the decade here it's down to half a decade at five years um, but in some decades in some other divisions you're, you're going a whole decade and only getting one or two years worth of ring champion in there it's just one of the little changes you see when you go through the data um, and listed listed it as a half but Marlon Starling certainly did well there. Certainly the most consistent top 10 rated while away in the 80s at eight years, um, a few years ahead of uh, joint second place between Maurice Blocker and Simon Brown. So you could say Starling, Simon Brown and Maurice Blocker were the longest rated well away contenders of the 80s, albeit not the best well awaits of the 80s. So let us leave the 80s there. I'll have a quick drink and we'll go on to the 1990s. So in the 1990s, and we've got a trio sitting, uh, well, uh, no, a quartet actually sitting as the longest rated fighters. In 10th place, we have Simon Brown, okay? Simon Brown, who also in his career, as well as doing well at welterweight, would also title it like middleweight. Simon Brown was top 10 rated for two years um, in the 90s. Both of those years, Simon Brown was top three rated, um, and he makes it two decades on the spin being listed with 24 ring rating points. And another fighter being rated for two years on the, uh, two decades on the spin is uh, ninth placed Maurice Blocker, who was top 10 rated for three years in the 90s. To, uh, top 10 rated for three years in the 90s, top three rated for two, and scored 25 ring rating points, just edging out Simon Brown. Well, in eighth place, we have Meldrick Taylor. Uh, Meldrick Taylor, um, following his light welterweight work, he was also top 10 rated at welterweight in the 90s, um, being rated for two years. Both of those years, he was top three rated, and Meldrick Taylor scored 27 ring rating points. While in seventh place, we have contender Obakar, one of the four joint longest rated contenders of the 1990s, um, at seven years. Now, Obakar was never top three rated, nor was he ever, obviously, a ring champion. Um, Obakar 
Obakar Obakar scored 31 ring rating points in total. And being rated seven years, like some other fighters, you look at their score totals to his, it shows that he was less highly consistently rated. He was more he was more consistently bottom half of top ten rated, where the guys at the top were more consistently top five rated. So in sixth place, okay, is Crisanto Espana. He was top 10 rated for half the decade of the 90s at five years. He was top three rated for two years, and Espana gained 37 ring rating points. While in fifth place, okay, Oscar De La Hoya, the golden boy, the six-weight champion, he was top 10 rated at welterweight for three years in the 90s. All three of those years, De La Hoya was top three rated, and he scored 42 ring rating points. While in fourth place, okay, we have former light welterweight James Buddy McGirt, um, rated for half the decade at five years. Um, he was top three rated for two years, and uh, Buddy McGirt scored 48 ring rating points at welterweight in the 1990s. But the top three, okay, and the other three joint longest rated contenders of the 1990s, um, along with Obakar, was indeed in third place, Ike Bazooka Corte, uh, who has history, of course, with Crisanto Espana, as we know. Ike Corte was top 10 rated for seven years. Um, five of those seven years, he was top three rated, and Ike Corte scored 57 ring rating points. But the top two are joint and broken by a tiebreak, okay? In second place, we have Felix Tito Trinidad, um, one of the great welterweight champions. Tito was top 10 rated for seven years. He was top three rated for seven years. And uh, Felix Trinidad scored 84 ring rating points at welterweight in the 1990s. But in first place, okay, is indeed Pernell Sweet Pea Whitaker, who was a lineal champion for a while in the 1990s at welterweight, um, following on his titles at um, lightweight and light welterweight, of course. Also, he jumped up in his career to capture, uh, was it against Julio Cesar Vasquez, that light middleweight strap. But Pernell Whitaker was the joint longest rated um, contender stroke champion of the 1990s, seven years. He was top three rated five years, and Pernell Whitaker scored 84 ring rating points. So, um, there we have um, the 1990s. Now, we have two more decades to go, the 2000s, the 2010s, and then I'll do the final um, decade breakdown. But as we can see there, the top number was not too high, okay? And some of the others right down to, like, fifth place were scoring quite well. Um, even though a number of them, you know, like Perno, Whitaker, De La Hoya, McGurt, also came from lower weights, um, you know, they still did quite well. So into the 2000s. Now, in 10th place in the 2000s was... Um, Andrew Lewis, he was top 10 rated for four years, um, top three rated for one year and scored 26 ring rating points. While in ninth place, okay, Ricardo Mayorga, he was top 10 rated for two years, top three rated for two years and Mayorga comes in with a total of 30 ring rating points. And then in eighth place, we have Thomas Damgaard, okay, he was top 10 rated for six years, uh, making him the joint second longest rated contender of the 2000s. He was top three rated for two years and Damgaard scored 43 ring rating points. But beating him on the tie break in seventh place, is his multiweight champion Miguel Cotto. He was top 10 rated at welterweight in the 2000s for four years. Three of those four years, he was top three rated, and Cotto scored 43 ring rating points in total. While in sixth place, okay, is Zab Super Judah. He was top 10 rated at welterweight in the 2000s for half a decade at five years. He was top three rated two years and did hold a ring title for one year. Judah comes in just under the half century at 49 ring rating points. And and beating Judah on the tiebreak, okay, is Floyd Mayweather Jr. Um, obviously not rated longer because after initially capturing title at Welter, ending up with the Hatton when he retired. Otherwise, it'd have been rated longer. But Floyd Mayweather Jr. was top 10 rated for f three years. Um, top 10. He was top three rated all three of those years. And two years, Floyd was a ring champion. So Floyd Mayweather scored also, like Judah, 49 ring rating points. In fourth place, okay, is Vernon Forrest. Uh, Vernon Forrest just outside the top three. He was top 10 rated for four years. Top three rated for four years. Vernon Forrest was a ring champion at Wellaway in the 2000s for one year. Um, and he scored 50 ring rating points in total. But the top three um, welterweights of the 2000s in ring rating points. In third place, we have Corey Spinks. He was rated after the decade at five years. Uh, Corey Spinks was also top three rated for three years, and he was a two-year ring champion. So the longest ring champion of the decade alongside Floyd Mayweather Jr. Corey Spinks comes in with a total of 57 
ring rating points overall. And in second place, okay, is Sugar Shane Mosley. Another fighter like many on here who came from low weights after having success in low weights. Shane Mosley was top 10 rated and the joint second longest with Thomas Damgard at six years as a top 10 fighter. All six of those years he was top three rated um, and Sugar Shane scored 69 ring rating points. But the longest and most consistent rated welterweight of the 2000s in first place is actually Antonio Margarito, who was top 10 rated as a welterweight in the ni- uh, 2000s, sorry, for nine out of 10 years. There was only one year in the 2000s when Margarito was not top 10 rated. He was also top three rated for six years, okay, the longest joint top three rated fighter um, at welterweight of the 2000s alongside Shane Mosley, um, but obviously was rated way more years than Mosley. So Margarito comes in and takes first spot in the 2000s with near near enough 100 um, at 97 ring rating points overall but certainly again there that's um, um, another list where a number of fighters have quite decent scores because really anything approaching 50 or over 50 is a very very decent score you know there's so many fighters um, on these massive data files I have we all entries in some fighters only get 2 or 3 for a decade you know they get get a 10th place finished an 8th place finished eighth place finish they have less than five ring rating points for the entire decade so you see getting anywhere even near 50 um is a good score and even from what i've seen getting over 30 in some divisions is a good score in a decade because so many fighters move around so much um right so we have one final decade to go the most recent decade we finished the 2010s let's look at that top 10 now so in 10th place of the 2010s was Amir Khan. Amir Khan was top 10 rated for three years. Um, he was top three rated for two years. And Amir Khan scored 23 ring rating points. And just ahead of him, coming in towards the end of the decade, is Terence Bud Crawford. Top 10 rated for two years. Top three rated for two years. And scored 24 ring rating points. Well, in 8th place, okay, we have Juan Manuel Marquez. He was top 10 rated for three years. Um, at well away in the 2010s and Marquez will feature in other divisions going down from here as you will see uh, he was top 3 rated for 2 years and scored 30 ring rating points while in 7th place Desert Storm Tim Bradley was top 10 rated for 6 years ok um, he was top 3 rated for 1 year Tim Bradley scored 39 ring rating points but the joint second longest joint is in a trio but the joint second longest rated um, well away contender of the 2010s is Sean Showtime Sean Porter. He's top 10 rated for 7 years out of the 10. Top 3 rated for 2 years. And Sean Porter comes in just shy of 50 with 46 ring rating points. While in 5th place, okay, Errol Spence Jr. Who may score higher in this decade if he stays at welterweight a while. But he was top 10 rated for 5 years in the 2010s. He was top 3 rated 3 of those years. Errol Spence Jr. scores 47 ring rating points. While in 4th place, okay, we have Keith Thurman. Uh, Keith Thurman was top 10 rated like Sean Porter um, and like Kel Brook to come um, joint second longest rated fighter at seven years Keith Thurman was top three rated for three years um, and scores 57 ring rating points while in third place okay the special one Kel Brook he was also like Thurman and Porter top 10 rated for seven years at welterweight in the 2010s four of those years Kel Brook was top three rated and he scored 67 ring rating points but even I if someone would have said who do you think are, are the highest scorers at welterweight even before I got the video ready and, and broke all the information down in my new format, I could have guessed it's going to be made with a Pacquiao. I was not sure which way to go, but in second place we have Floyd Mayweather Jr., top 10 rated for half the decade uh, prior to his retirement. Floyd, no doubt, if he'd have fought a few more years, would have won this decade. He would be number one. Um, but he was top three rated all five of those years, and he was a two-year ring champion um, at away in the 2010s. And you've seen Floyd on the last decade and on this one, obviously now going down in divisions. Um, you know, we will see Floyd and Pacquiao appear in many more to come. Floyd scores 79 nine ring rating points leaving the all conquering winner of the most consistent or stroke highly rated well away of the 2010s it is that great filipino um, hall of famer soon to be manny pacman pacquiao who was top 10 rated for 
all 10 years of the 2010s at welterweight. Like I said, he's one of those very rare fighters along with uh, Tava, Gainer, Archimon, Guillermo, Rigondo, one of only five fighters to score a full 10. Uh, Pacquiao was top three rated for six of those years, so over half of the decade at 2010s, Pacquiao was top three rated. Um, he was never a ring champion, but Pacquiao wins this decade, coming in with a total of 97 ring rating points overall. Now, of course, where Pacquiao is in his career, he's not likely to strongly feed Feature, um, in future years although he has scored a third place finish in the updated 2020 rating so already on the next decade because following this I will keep updating these decades yes it will be another 10 years before the update videos come for the next decade <laughs> but you know it is what it is when, if, if I am still on YouTube and I ain't been abducted by aliens I will do that video at that time but to me Pacquiao a very worthy winner the longest rated well away of the 2010s an incredible 10 years out of 10. So there we have the breakdown. Let us just now go on to our recap slide and recap who the decade's top finishers and point totals and who they were. So in the 1920s, the number one was Joe Dundee, scoring 49 points. In the 1930s, Jimmy McLan in The Great Weight Mover was 103 points. And in the 1940s, the old conquering Sugar Ray Robinson um, comes in with 137 points. In the 1950s, Kid Gavilan took that decade, scoring 85 ring rating points. While in the 1960s, okay, the great Emil Griffith scored an exact 100 ring rating points. In the 1970s, Jose Napolis comes in with a total of 110. While in the 1980s, okay, the magic man Marlon Stalin um, scored a respectable total of 82. In the 1990s, Pernell Whitaker topped that one, coming in with a total of 84. And in the 2000, and I'm, you know, I'm not 100% sure because Pernell Whitaker were never a ring champion and Trinidad scored the same point total so I'm going to go in and double check that because I use um, a tie break system and I'm not sure I haven't tighten that because Trinidad neither was a ring champion Trinidad has more top three finishers so I need to just go back and double check that tie break um, but of course if that is amended it will be amended on the pound for pound video more so so in the 2000s the winner was Antonio Magrito who scored 97 ring rating points and winning in the 2010s is the great six weight champion Manny Pacman Pacquiao with 97 ring rating points and there you have a very decorated list and some absolute all-time great fighters in those decades right there. You know, from Pacquiao to Whitaker to Napolese, Griffith, Gavilan, Robinson, McLarnin. Still very, very good fighters and, and capable fighters like Dundee, uh, Marlon, Starling, Margarito. Great list of names in there. We'll see how these guys do, the winners, in the Pound for Pound video to come at the end of the playlist. But meanwhile, the light welterweight division will come next over the next few days. I'm out for now.